Welcome back, everyone. We are right on, right in time for our uh, item 6.7, or 6 p.m. item, redistricting public hearing number three. Draft maps will be presented. And uh, I know it's 6.05, we just, you know, we had to make sure that we fit in with the rest of the day. We're a little behind schedule and everything, so thank you for bearing with us. And uh, I think the item is going to be introduced by Let's see. Carol. Carol. Uh, actually, Matthew Rostein is going oh, to do okay. this. has been his project, anchoring our consultant, Margaret Monk. So go ahead, Matthew. Okay, sorry about that. Matthew, the ball is yours. Okay. Good evening, Good board. board. As, As you're you aware, census, census data, data is updated every 10 years. years. And in the year following, supervisory real districts, districts are adjusted to ensure the fairest possible, possible representation for all residents. Today is the third of four public redistricting hearings to include the presentation of draft maps. Margaret Long and Carolyn Walker of Prentice Law are here to facilitate this evening's hearing with your board. Welcome, Margaret and Carolyn. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Uh, today is uh, the third, as Matthew said, the third of our four here public hearings that are required by code. Uh, this is the one where we were going to get our hands dirty and dig into what the maps are and what the maps show. Um, one of the things I want to start off by saying is, is you as County Lake County are incredibly lucky uh, to not only have Matthew, but to have Lon on staff. Um, they have really uh, been, been incredibly helpful in this process as we would not have been able to get here without them. Um, and it's, it's very unusual to have such high quality people right at your fingertips. So I really appreciate having them have the access to them and being able to use them. Uh, what we're going to do is start out first is I just go through a quick PowerPoint and kind of talk about the process and then again we'll dig in the, the proposed maps that we have. Okay. So, uh, uh, first, obviously, obviously we're, we're here on the map of the, the third one. one. I'm happy to be able to present it. Um, um, we, we always go over at the beginning of every one, just kind of a recap of what we're here to talk about. about. Um, and that's a good, good job of explaining uh, that we're here to draw, draw the supervisorial districts uh, based on the 2020 uh, census numbers that have been provided to us. Um, when, when we are, are looking, looking at this and how we draw our lines, we do look at an order of priority these, these items. Um, we want the, 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 the property, the, the, the area, area to be geographically contiguous. Um, we want to keep, keep as best, best possible the integrity of neighborhoods, the integrities of cities and towns. Uh, we um, want to try to use to the best of our ability identifiable boundaries, whether that's a river, a street, a rail line, um, something that is already there in place. And we, we want to try to keep them as geographically compact as possible. Uh, we don't want them to be spread out. We don't have to have them in long strips. Uh, we don't look at uh, favoring any political party. We don't look at who's supervisor of each district. Uh, and we don't look at the political makeup of each district. That's what we do not look at. When, when we, we look, look at, at 2010, these are the numbers that you came up with. And um, I am incredibly impressed that your percentage of deviation is so low. Uh, legally, we are required to keep that number at 10% or low. So either 10% above or 10% below. Um, yours are under 1%, under 0.1% uh, for all your districts. Um, that's almost unheard of. Uh, because really, again, we have to keep it under 10% uh, from a consultant's perspective. If we keep it under 5%, we're doing very well. Um, typically, 2 or 3% is what you'll see. Uh, just based on the fact that these census blocks are not, we're not looking at each individual, we're looking at census blocks. So they contain a number of individuals uh, in that block. So, so if, if we were to use the exact, exact same maps, maps we had in 2010 and just inserted the new population numbers of 2020, this is, this is what it would look like. Um, um, it's, it's really not, not that far off. off. Uh, you, uh, you do, do have, have two districts, uh, District 2 and District, and District 5, 5, that are a little over that 5%, uh, well under 10%, which is what we're asking for. Um, but they're, you know, they're a little bit high, but they're not that bad. Uh, the, the only thing, thing we do have is we do have 116 individuals who, based, based on the fact, fact that their census block was split with two, don't, don't have, aren't, aren't currently, currently, currently assigned. assigned. They're, they're considered, considered unassigned. unassigned. Um, so they're, they're both in District, district one, 1 and District 2. two. So, may, may, I, may I interrupt for a quick section? Is it possible to see only the slide and not the next slide? Because then it really makes it so small that even on my computer from here, I'm struggling. 
I can see the numbers, but I can't read everything. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know that because I can't see on my screen what's showing. So I appreciate you stopping me that. So. Again, Again, the 116, 116 regardless of what we do, we do have to put them in either District 1 or District 2. Uh, but, but other than, than that, that is if the numbers are not that far off, off which, which is, is great, great, great starting point for us. us. So, so when we're, we're looking, looking at the population of Lake County, um, in 2010, 2010, you were at 64,665. You've increased it by almost 4,000 individuals. Um, again, again, this, this is, is the current, current breakup of it. Of it. Uh, there's 116 unassigned, un 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 but, but if, if we, we were to have uh, even districts, uh, each, each district would have 13,632.6 individuals. So that's, so that's one of our goals, goals try to get, get as close, close to having each number in each district there. there. So, so what we are here, here today is look at whether we need to distribute the population to stay within that daily deviation, so that 10%, again, again hoping for around 5% or less. We also, we also want, to want to take into consider the comments that were provided by the public and the supervisors about, about what, what is community of interest, uh, where they, you know, where, uh, where they want to see changes, uh, where they want to have questions about uh, how it was done last time. And again, and then consider this. Stop, I'm hearing that there's an echo on Zoom. Uh, I'm good. You're good? Okay, just checking. Somebody said that there might be an echo. So we were hearing there, there was an echo on Zoom much earlier today. Oh. Sam, are you uh, aware of any Zoom difficulties? No. No. It... Thank you. Okay, okay. Well, let, let me, me... <laughs> um, and I'm happy to, to pause. Um, the, last, the last thing we look at is communities of interest. So in our last meeting, we talked about communities of interest. And again, we took very careful notes. Um, thank you, Matthew, for, for uh, taking very good notes and really listening to what was said. Uh, we also did receive some uh, input online, which was a great thing. Uh, as we talked about before, there is on the district page on the Lake County website. There are there's access to email. We did receive some comments via email. Um, um, the community of interest that were identified are the Cobb Area Council, Council off the base and road, uh, the, the Rivieras, Rivieras, Clear Lake, Lake Kelseyville, um, want to keep the school districts intact, uh, looking at the tribal land, land especially uh, the area north of the Nice, will start and cut off, and keeping the business districts intact. So that's the Lakeshore Drive and Clear Lake. Uh, everything that was provided to us as a community of interest, we considered. Uh, what, uh, what I'm going to show you now is why some of them are not necessarily uh, good, good options and why we can't, can't consider and keep them and just get just together. together. Um, um, but, but, but I want to make it clear to anyone who contributed, everything was considered. We looked at, uh, and long again, was, was wonderful and, and allowing us in real time to look at every option. Um, but as, as you see, see, some are not possible. So looking at draft number one, keeping all of Clear Lake together. If, if we, we were, were to do, do that, keep all clear lake, which is the community, community of interest together, our numbers would be off 22% um, for district two and 19% for district one. one. That's, That's above the 10% that we're allowed, that we're allowed by law. law. So, so if, if we, we were to do this, this we would have to do a lot of other significant changes to other, other areas in order to make it even out. Um, and, and, and in the community and, and discussing with it, uh, it did not, not seem like a viable option. So again, we want to present everything to you so you can see our thought process as we went into this. Another, Another draft, draft map, map that, that created some uh, boundaries uh, that, that were a little off the percentage of deviation you would like, um, but, but is open to the, the, the board's consideration, is moving the blocks along Lakeshore Drive from District 1 to District 2. Uh, again, uh, that uh, created uh, District 5 uh, and, and District 2 having a pretty significant um, deviation, not up to the 10%, so again, this, this would, be would be an allowable map. map. Um, but, but we would want to make findings um, about that, why we are having such a, a large deviation um, in order to do that. So again, that was moving uh, up the blocks on Lake Shore Drive from District 1 to District 2. We did get some comments regarding uh, the Kelsonville area uh, and uh, the concept of moving all areas east of Kelsey Creek and north of Kelseyville, Kelseyville District 4 to District 5. This includes uh, Rivera Heights, Heights Soto Bay, Steel Mill, Head Drive, and Gaddy Lane. Lane. Uh, and, and this, again, again would legally be allowed, but as you can see from District 4, it would get, get very close to that 10%, uh, and would, would, would probably uh, 
uh, requires some, some findings, findings in order for us to justify doing that. that. We're, we're looking, looking at maybe some, some modifications in other districts to, accom to, to accommodate it. Um, um, and again, and our concern, concern was, was when we looked, looked at this, making those accommodations to other districts would break up communities of interest or uh, didn't make legal sense for us to move forward on. And the last one that we kind of worked through um, and then uh, came to a conclusion as a committee that it's probably not the best option, but again, presenting for you, is uh, moving only Riviera Heights um, from District 4 to District 5, and that's the area west of Lakeview Estates Drive. Now, we do have a proposal in one of our draft maps that, we, that we're proposing does move Riviera Heights, but as you can see, the numbers here were over 5%. Uh, and so we felt that uh, just alone doing this act was probably not beneficial to um, redistricting. Um, so we did include that in one of our draft maps. So we have other, uh, other offsets to accommodate those numbers. So we'll get to those in a second. Um, just we're going to, I want to finish off my PowerPoint before we get draft maps that we are recommending a review of. Um, we have one additional um, public hearing, which will take place on November 30th. Uh, that will be during the board meeting at 9 a.m. Uh, we're, I, sh I actually don't know if it's a board meeting day, but it's a special board meeting day. Uh, so we'll be doing it at 9, 9 a.m. Um, that's what we'll be actually adopting the draft map. And, and so that will be where we present the final form in um, ordinance form uh, to get that um, amendment to the code to get that done. That gets us done well ahead of the December 15th deadline. And I know when we first started talking about that, that December 15th deadline was seemed like it was coming way too quickly. Um, but again, I, you have fantastic staff that powered through a lot of very complex data to, to make this possible. So we are, we're looking strong to get that done. Um, again, uh, we are, as I said, we still have the information. Um, after today, uh, we will still consider anything you send to us, but again, uh, it's a little late for us to make significant changes because we don't want to have an opportunity to do it again, but we will consider everything that's provided. Um, but more importantly, everything we're providing today, including the PowerPoint and the draft maps, are all available online. And so if the members of the public can't read the PowerPoint um, because it's too small or they're not in the boardroom to see the blown up maps, you can go on there and get a very close look of what we're looking at. So I'm gonna stop sharing for this and then um, go into uh, my next share. Now the next share are the five maps that you have presented for you on your board. I'll go through them uh, in detail about what each of those are. Um, and then you can look at kind of what five options that we um, as the, the group working on it uh, conceived as, as viable options. Uh, again, you have Lon present here today. And once I'm done going through the five maps that he drew up, um, I will turn my shares over to him and he can actually in real time make adjustments that you uh, would like to see what it looks like. Um, I, just so you know, we have probably tried every adjustment you are going to look at. So we may be able to tell you in advance why it can and can't work. Um, but, you know, if there are little tweaks that we're looking at making, uh, he would be uh, available to do that. So let me share. One moment. Okay. Just to confirm, tell me if you can see um, the maps. Okay. Give me the Okay. So this is option one. Um, option one changes the map area north of the Nice Lucerne cutoff and along the Big Sin Road and moves Riviera, Riviera Heights from District four to district five, and it moves the unassigned area to district one. Uh, you can see the numbers under the option area of what that does for each district. Uh, percentage wise, uh, it keeps everything at 5% or under. Um, district one will have, be off by 1.68%. District two will be 5.03. Uh, district three is 1.76. District four is 3.4. And district five is 1.73. So that is what this contemplates. Option number two, again, changes the area north of the Nice Lucerne cutoff and along the Big Sin Road, uh, moves Riviera Heights from District 4 to District 5, uh, moves the unassigned individuals to District 1. Um, but we added some additional blocks to the Clear Lake from uh, District uh, 2 to District 1. And the reason we did that is because it evens out the numbers uh, a, a bit. 
um, and takes the number from uh, District 1 to only being off 0.72%, District 2 being off 4.07%, District 3, 1.18%, District 4, 8, 3.8%. Four zero and District 5, 1.73. So with that little tweak, we were able to get the numbers um, well below the 5%, which is, which is ideal. And we did that again by moving additional blocks in Clear Lake from District 2 to District 1. I'm going to keep going unless there's questions, and then we can maybe chat about it afterwards. Uh, district, the third option, again, moves the area north of the Nice Lucerne cutoff. Uh, and along Big Sin Road, uh, it moves the Riviera Heights from District 4 to District 5, moves unassigned to District 1, and moves Clear Lake area south of 18 and east of Highway 53 from District 2 to District 1. And again, this is gets our numbers incredibly close. Um, it is District 1 is 1.8. 1.78%, District 2 is 0.87%, District 3 is 3.40, District 4 is 2.56, and District 5 is 1.73. Uh, so again, from a consultant perspective, uh, those numbers are very uh, solid in terms of their deviation uh, and are very supportable in terms of moving forward. Option four uh, changes the area north of the uh, Nice Lucerne cutoff and along the Bigson Road. It divides the Riviera Heights, as discussed, from uh, D uh, District 4 to District 5, and it moves the blocks south of Lakeshore Drive in Clear Lake from District 1 to District 2. It also does the unassigned individuals, moves them to District 2. So for option four, um, the numbers are not as good. Um, the most specifically, District 2 is now 5.91 above the deviation. Um, District 1 is 2.57, District 3 is 1.78, District 4 is 3.40, and District 5 is 1.73. Now, I'm saying all these numbers, and I know you probably can't keep track of them. They are, are on the maps that are provided, um, so you can look at them if you have any questions or would like to go back and review them. I just want to make sure that they're um, on the record for um, moving forward on this. Uh, and the last one uh, is the option oh, five that's being presented. One second. Uh, we just lost the uh, projector. It went to sleep. It's done. <laughs> Don't blame it. You guys have had a long day. Is it on that television right there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's hot. It's overheated. And we burnt it out. <laughs> Oopsies. Can everyone see the, the monitor over here? At, uh, where? Because if that's the case, Mo yeah. and I can share. Do you have it up there? Right? I don't, but I can see. I can see okay. And then you have yours. I think it's still projecting online because I can see. Okay. So we can at least. Okay. Okay. Right. I think we're good to continue, though. Um, yeah, one second there. All right, Margaret, you can continue. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so again, the last option we're providing uh, is the, the, air, the change of the area of the Nice Lucerne Cutoff, Big Sing Road, um, and then moving blocks south of Lakeshore Drive from Clear Lake, uh, in Clear Lake from District 1 to District 2. Um, and it also moves the, all the area east of Kelsey Road and north of Kelsey B. Bill from District 4 to District 5. Um, this and also unassigned areas to District 2. 
This one, again, is not a recommended one, but we did get a lot of comments on the Kelseyville area, and so we did want to present a draft map for consideration. Um, this one has a pretty substantial um, deviation in District 4, which goes down to 9.53%, and it's legally uh, acceptable, but it's a very uh, large deviation. Um, it also has District 2 at 5.9, District 5 at 5.4.59, uh, District 1 at 2.57, and District 3 at 1.76. So while this one's legally allowable and we did get a lot of comments on it, it is not one that we are recommending, but we are offering it for consideration. Um, and with that, I will stop sharing my screen um, and if um, allow Lon to share if, if, it, if it comes up, but we're open for questions. Excellent, thank you. Jessica? So thanks, Margaret. I, um, I'm curious as to why, um, I, I know that there was some input for the Riviera Heights to be included in District 5 but I'm curious why only just only option five has um, the areas close to Kelseyville town. That's specifically important to me because that is a community of interest that doesn't have um, representation as an unincorporated town. While the HOA has very strong uh, leadership, it's very cohesive, it, it does align with the other HOAs. But I, I feel like keeping the town of Kelseyville together is, um, is, is, is much more appropriate for, for their representation. And I'm happy to respond to that. And we did get comments on that, which is again, why we presented option five. Um, the question as to why we didn't include in the other options, um, we tried to include it in every option. That was part of kind of the process we went through. Um, but in doing so, and, and, and I, I will kind of ask Alon to speak to this as well, um, it broke up other districts in a way that we pleased. We couldn't do either through census blocks or other communities of interest that, uh, you know, because again, the districts, the way they aligned, it, it took areas that we couldn't, we couldn't break up. Um, we can, if it's the board's pleasure, start using option five and again, have lawn make some of those adjustments to see if we can get those numbers to be um, more coherent with what we're looking at. Um, and we're happy to do that at, at your pleasure. But again, we did we did try. We did look at all those options uh, to try to keep that because that we did receive several comments regarding that as a community of interest. It would qualify as a community of interest, and so it needs to be considered as a community of interest. Um, but at your pleasure, we can uh, pull up option five uh, on a map and look at uh, kind of have Lon walk through what can be done to, to make that yeah. a viable option. I just didn't see an option where Riviera Heights wasn't moved to District Five. Correct. That is correct. And that the reason was, is we did determine that to be a community of interest and moving it um, did not significantly change the numbers to where it would it turn and made anything, um, uh, any of the op other options not viable. So again, that's your pleasure. We're happy to look at yeah. an option that's not included, um, but it didn't change the numbers so significantly that it was appropriate to divide it up after it was established as a community of interest. So, okay. So one community of interest, um, I, I, I don't see how bo both of them can be considered a community of interest, but one of them is excluded. So I'd, I'd love for us to look through the map together. Absolutely. And, and again, to be clear, we didn't exclude any of them. There's a lot of communities of interest. We looked at every single one of them. Um, some of them, uh, such as the city of Clear Lake, um, we could not keep it in one district without throwing all of our numbers off. So right. we determined it, we had to divide that one up. Um, Kelseyville was one that, again, we, we determined that we, we could keep it in there, but the numbers were pretty significant. So let's look at it. Um, Lon, I know Lon has it up okay. right now. Um, Lon, do you have any suggestions on what we can move around in order to get those numbers? Um, well, we're um, just to give you a general overview of what you're seeing on this map, the, the light gray lines are the census blocks, and those are Kind of, kind of the basic building blocks okay. for the districts. Those are the boundaries that we need to follow because those have the population counts. Um, these colored boundaries represent the dis different um, districts in this particular plan. The one I have pulled up is um, sort of a compilation of the ones that Margaret already went over and covers most of those areas. And I'll just give a quick overview before we get into that. Um, 
So one of, one of the, the one um, north of the Nieselstern cutoff, and I apologize, it's this background map that's a little slow to draw. It's this area here between Highway 29, Nieselstern cutoff, and uh, Rodman Slough. Um, and the reason that one was moved is because one of the uh, guidelines is not splitting up the tribal lands. And currently, Robinson Rancheria has a little bit of land over here spanning Highway 29, and currently the uh, district is split. So this was just an attempt to keep all of that land in a single district, move it all into a single district. Um, the next one is going to be along Big Canyon Road. I'm going to turn off this background here. It's Still thinking really faster. hard. <laughs> there. Okay. So what, where you're looking at here is, and this one was uh, the Cobb Council, Cobb Area Council. The boundary kind of clips off this corner. This is, um, if you're familiar with the area, this is where Big Canyon Road makes a hard bend and Etowah Springs Road heads off to the west. Um, and the Cobb Council, Cobb Area Council, uh, kind of cuts off that corner. So we were trying to pick up just these couple of blocks. It's only three people, um, but move these blocks over into District 5 to cover that area. Um, and those are the two that are included on every one of the plans. Um, for the Soda Bay area, you can see currently the District, um, you know, district uh, 4 picks up all of uh, Riviera Heights, Soda Bay, Gaddy Lane, that whole area. And if we include all, everything east of Kelsey Creek, so we use this as the boundary, the problem is, as we had said, it throws these numbers way off. And these, these right here are the key numbers you want to be looking at mm -hmm. um, and keeping these under 10%, plus or minus. The problem with including this in every plan is that District 4 then has to pick up, pick up population somewhere else to make up for that. And the only place where there's any real significant population, because you're looking at probably about 1,000 people in here, I believe, um, is going to be south of Highway 29 in Kelseyville. So um, Crookshank, Live Oak. Kelsey Creek Drive, all of those areas would then have, you know, either those areas would have to be moved into um, District 4, or you have to go all the way up to the north end and then start getting into uh, Blue Lakes, Winter Springs, Bachelor Valley, and possibly even Upper Lake, and moving those into District 4. So it's just a matter of where, if, you, if we want to keep this area and balance it out, um, then, those, those, then we have to pick up population somewhere else for District 4. Can I offer a suggestion for District 4? We can do that. We can do it live right here and see what the numbers do. So, so by the way, I, I want to say I've been looking at this mapping software or system. I uh, really appreciate the work that's been done. I don't know if it's automatic, what was shipped to us, or if you had to put a lot of work. Uh, but getting that, le <laughs> excuse me, that level of detail uh, with the numbers for each census track is really useful to be able to kind of look around and see what can be changed, what can't be changed. So really appreciate um, what we're looking at here. Uh, it is automatic, and you'll see that in just a second. It all does it on the fly. I, I love it. Um, I was thinking in district, so I'm looking at the area versus people as well. Um, and I'm looking at District 3, which is such a huge area to travel. And so in my opinion, I, I think that the larger your area is to travel, then it's probably a good idea to see if we can reduce the number of population, obviously trying to stay within that 5%, if that's possible. Um, is it possible to go 29 all the way to 20 and all the way east to the border? And what would that do? Because District, District 4 is missing 1,200 people in comparison, uh, and District 3 has 242 more. Just a, just a thought to try and see yeah. if we can alleviate the traveling time for a supervisor to have to travel that entire distance in District 3. This may take a couple of steps uh, to get it. But let's see. It's not a huge amount, I know that. But it 
looks like a good geographical barrier. Yeah. So what I'm gonna right now I'm gonna go up and use um, twenty and twenty nine as a boundary for these, and see what that does for our numbers. So this takes it up. Let's, well, we got a couple more right in here. Oh, be in that one anyway. Okay, so you can see by moving that uh, that boundary all the way up to Highway 20 and to 29, that brings you down to from nine point. I think this was negative 9.5. Now it's 7.3. Is this option five? Uh, this is a modification of option five. Okay, and so then if we went back to Kelseyville and north of Soda Bay stayed in District Four, and south of Soda Bay stayed in District Five. Up to uh, where about the state park? Yeah, so the state park would be in District Four. Okay, let's see. So that this it's a little difficult to see. I'm. <laughs> I've looked at these so much I can tell where these bound the block boundaries are even without roads drawn on there. So it's uh, I apologize if it's um, a little confusing, but let's okay. So here's the state park. If we uh, follow Soda Bay Road and then use the state park, the eastern edge of the state park as a boundary, that does this to our numbers. I know one one area that was specifically brought up was Steelhead. Uh, wanting to move Steelhead Drive back into um, District Five, but but this keeps it into district. This keeps it in District Four. So this this is a viable option. If the numbers are still um, off uh, more than again as the consult from a consultant's perspective, we would like. Um, if this is what you know, if this is where the board would like to lean, I mean, I I would we would make some findings, on, you know, and make sure it's very clear as part of the resolution why this is being done. Um, but keeping Kelseyville together is um, an appropriate reason and rationale to do that based on the fact that it is an identifiable community of interest. So we can make those findings. Um, Lon, is there anything else in looking at this modification of option five that you could recommend um, to reduce the, the numbers in uh, district two and increase them in district four? Um, so if we go, uh, if we move this boundary from the creek over to Gaddy Lane, uh, but then you're going to have people on one side of Gaddy Lane in one district and the other side in another district. And so that's how it is uh, now, and that's not working. Yeah. Okay. Anything else besides that you can contemplate? Um, What's that? Oh, would it be contiguous if the well, next block over from the state park, the next two blocks, where it has 82 or 80? This area here? Yeah. Um, the problem is that then you're splitting a subdivision. Um, I, I think okay. it's like if you have a state subdivision. Okay. The, the, the subdivision, act, let me turn on the parcels so it gives you a better view. I believe this is the subdivision boundary over here. And the problem is that's not a, there's no block that runs along there. So it would have to be half the subdivision. But yes, we can move. You're talking about this area right here. Yeah. Are the would are they contiguous? Contiguous. Yeah. They, this is all contiguous with the state park, um, and that does that brings our numbers closer to five percent. So, in, in this in this model, does it divide the subdivision up? It does. Yes. Okay. And what about doing the whole subdivision? Uh, again, then you can't because the subdivision boundary is uh, a bit to the east of where this line currently is. And the place based on the block configuration, suddenly it's going to pick up a good portion of Riviera Heights. 
In the other maps, though, this was carved off of Riviera Heights. Uh, no, on the on, on the, the option um, one, on the on one through four, it was just Riviera Heights and not the Soda Bay. It was similar to this one. It went to um, where is that? It used that same block boundary. It just went the other way with it. Um, it, it picked up a lot of the actual Soda Bay subdivision uh, along the lake shore. Yeah. But what if we did that whole Soda Bay subdivision? Picked up all of these, move them in, yeah. So, ba so basically go back to it, but uh, back to what it currently is, uh, or back to the, keep the boundary closer to where it currently is. Sorry. <laughs> So this would be this would this would involve moving um, Riviera just Riviera Heights and a few houses along the uh, edge of this um, this other subdivision into back into District Five, and then keeping the areas along Gaddy moving the areas along Gaddy Lane into four or back from four to five rather. Excuse me. So this way, Kelseyville, Gaddy Lane, and Riviera Heights are in District 5. Correct. It's, every, it's everything north of Soda Bay Road in the Soda Bay area would remain in District 4. What do you think, Tina? But then you're dividing uh, Blue Lakes up, though, because one side of the road would be mine and the other side would be EJ's. Yeah, I, I didn't really see, I couldn't really make it out of that, but I've if we can go back to it, I'd like to look at that. Yeah, absolutely. It would make sense for for flooding and the issues that we work with flooding, but would it make sense that we're splitting, splitting it up? Right. But I'm trying to see what part of it is split. So this would follow the highway. So I would have this side of the highway, you would have the other side of the highway. The, in the Blue Lakes area. Um, so yeah, and I think there are a couple of um, mobile home parks along the north side of the highway in there, yeah. I believe. And that's how Highway 20 is on the east as well. Yeah, Highway 20 is used, currently used as a dividing line to the east. Well. From a, again, from perspective of looking at it, um, from an outside perspective, looking at it to make sure it's got legal compliance and that it's appropriate in terms of the code, um, you're, you are using a natural boundary, which is appropriate, um, and it is is keeping communities of interest in place. Um, I would question District 2 being a little bit out of whack as well in terms of numbers and, and want to have a conversation about that. But, um, Absolutely. But this is appropriate for a from again from a perspective of compliance with the, the requirements that we have. Currently, what part of Scotts Valley Road does that do? do how far does that go out when it comes to Scotts? Because I, when I think of Scotts Valley Road, that goes. I think of District Four, just in my opinion. I'm not sure exactly where it stops, yeah. but the current boundary is. Let's see. don't have a specific address but it is um but it's i know where it's, i i kind of have an i idea. believe it's a bit north of the old campground kelly kelly's campground i believe it i believe i believe that's right in this area here so i believe it's right around the kelly campground the former kelly family campground it makes sense and i think that uh what we'll do is, uh, if that's what we have to do in order to make the adjustments i mean i'll just invite the uh, or the blue lakes people would have you know i mean they might you know, just ask. I mean, but they're all in the same, they would still be in the same district, right? They would just be split. So Blue Lakes, do they go to the Upper Lake Town Hall? They're, well, or? we don't have a representative currently, so technically. But that, that's how, how they've been going, though? They've been, or not at all involved? There hasn't really been any involvement. We have, we've got one person, but he didn't uh, end up, uh, I, I think, yeah, should I, I think we could have this open, right? If you would, yeah. I wasn't thinking about the max. 
Uh, Diane Fridley, uh, retired registrar of voters, but I'm representing the, the registrar. Sam, is the mic on? Oh, Diane, if you can just move a little closer. Thank you. Maybe if I take this off. Uh, 20 years ago, we uh, divided that area. The 20 Blue Lakes um, last, well, two uh, census ago. And it was very, very confusing to the Upper Lake people, and they were very angry. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Okay. Because you have 20, so... The uh, creek side would be in District 4, going on 20. And then the other side, Water Springs, Baxter Valley, would be in District 3. So the same thing at Blue Lakes, you're going to have one side of the road, like you say, District 4, across the street, it's going to be District 3. So just keep that in mind. What I'd recommend is that if we could look at district the district two and see if we can get those numbers a little lower and then potentially open it up for public comment. Uh, once we've had the public comments again, we can bring it back and continue to modify the maps based on, on what we're hearing. Okay. Yeah, I haven't even looked at the other side of the county. Yet. Sorry. <laughs> so this currently this boundary. Um, the yeah. proposed boundary shifts the uh, these two blocks along. This is Lakeshore Drive right here. So the basically what this does is put the business district along Lakeshore Drive all within one district, District uh, Two. I love technology. Um, so in looking at that, is there an area between District 1? Well, District 1 is, we can we can do some transfers. Is there any areas or neighborhoods within District 1 that can be moved over to District 2 without causing any disruption to communities of interest? I've already spoken, so I'm waiting on Moak to speak first. Well, when we're talking about they're splitting it up and clear, you know, with the Clear Lake boundaries and, and everything we go to, it's exactly how it's set up now for my district and yours is that it is. One side of the street is District 1 and the other side of the street is District 2. Um, so I don't think we're going to avoid that uh, anyway. So do I have any specific comments or suggestions, uh, you know, from anyone? Uh, be open to that. So go ahead. One of my suggestions is that on the east side of Old Highway 53, um, before Lakeshore Drive, that's kind of a little community back there behind the Crossroads Church. Um, and so let me see, where would that be in comparison to what we're looking at? I think it's, yeah, right where your mouse is, like to where it splits off to the right a little bit. Yeah, I think that community back there is a, is a similar community. Um, and so maybe putting that together will raise District 1's numbers and decrease District 2's numbers. Just a uh, the, the problem that I see with that is if you look, um, there's one, one block that's going to be a problem, and that's this one, highlighted in blue. See how so it, why, why, it, it kind of snakes around here? It's, and it's unfortunately with, the, with these blocks, it's kind of an all or nothing thing. So if you pick this block up, you're picking up everything uh, south of... Um, Lakeshore uh, before you between the highway and old, old 53. That, that, that is a very strange census. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody needs to uh, go back to the drawing board on that one. <laughs> um, but it, it, Especially since just, I think you go south. Creek runs down the middle there. Hey, I'm sorry. Sorry. That's right. That's right. If you go south of where that finger is coming right through that community, all that section. Pick up these. I, and start just, picking uh, up some of these. The yeah, another option that them. just I just saw is um, on the other side, south of Dam Road. Yeah. If you use Dam Road as a dividing line over here, rather than Cash Creek. But um, okay, so let's see. So we want to move. Which areas? The, these blocks here. 
that's what I was suggesting, yes. And again, just spitballing. When you say the crossroads, that's the crossroads church right there on the corner? Yeah. Okay. Right after you uh, pass the village area. So basically, everything except that one fairly convoluted block does this. I think that's better. Um, maybe not. Yeah, no, that's better. Do you that that again from a numbers perspective that looks good? I can we can justify it as a community of interest uh, with shared. Uh, uh, share community interest. Um, do we want to try it before we kind of lock this in and open to public comment? Do we want to try Lon's suggestion of looking um, uh, the south area? Or does this seem appropriate to the supervisors? You mean the dam road suggestion? The dam road suggestion. Thank yeah, you. I definitely like to look at it. Okay. Uh, do you want to include this change I just made with that? No, I would think I would think it'd be instead of. Okay. Okay. Well, it, it certainly gets you under the five percent, barely. Yeah, the numbers aren't as good, but it, it we just wanted to, you know, throw it out for discussion. Does that make more sense from a uh, perspective of, of supervisory districts um, having the line and we can, we can have a creek dividing it off as opposed to kind of a community of interest that's undefined? It, it may. So, again, I, I think we do want to look at those those natural landmarks as a, as a top priority to consider. And this one would do that. It gets the numbers below five. Uh, it, it keeps Kelseyville together. I, I think this is an absolute viable map. I'm fine with that. Supervisor Sabatier. I, I don't mind at all. I think it's got continuity. It's old Highway 53 that hits Dam Road, then continues down Dam Road. So there's a little uh, continuity to the connections. Uh, I, I'm kind of curious, what does it look like if everything from Lakeshore to old 53 and Highway 53 was implemented? Um, what that would look like? Because well, we, everything, everything in this area here. Yeah, just to just to kind of see what that looks like. I, I don't mind what I'm seeing here. Um, I think it makes more sense than a random amount uh, that we just did earlier. Um, but I think that if we use the geographical uh, main streets and highways, that that could make sense as well. Um. Yeah. That Actually, now suddenly District 1 is in the positive instead of being a negative number. But oh, it's still he took a lot. He took a lot. <laughs> and I'll t uh, maybe I can get Redbud back. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was just going to ask if we want to move it back to where the current boundary is here. Uh, now, the only thing is that this is that one split district right here. Right, right, that right. Split block right here. Um, Better. So that's what the, that's what moving it. Um, uh, and I was thinking back into District Two. Oh, moving, moving which to District Two? Uh, the the uh, Lakeshore Drive uh, and Redbud Park. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you wanted to move those to to. Okay, let's see. No, now uh, District 1 is getting closer and closer to 5. Yeah. So these were, let me, just because it's a little bit confusing. So move these two back to District okay. yeah. 2. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's where we just were. Okay, so this is, yes. Yeah, that was quite a large gain from all those, um, that little, uh, yeah, from, from this area over yeah. here. Yeah, I think the dam road one is probably a better option. So, 
So what I typically like to do again is, is see if we, the supervisors can kind of come up with a rough consensus on, on their preferred map um, and then open it up to public to comment and then again bring it back. Um, the map that I think we're looking at right now is from what, I, what I'm hearing is the preferred map um, once we've figured out the uh, District 1, District 2 dividing line. Um, and then, uh, but I'm open, I just want to make sure all supervisors have had a chance to comment on it uh, and if they preferred one to get their vote in there. Could we go back, since now that we've done District 1 and 2, can we go back to District 4 and 3 and see if what the numbers look like pulling Blue Lakes back out? Okay. Hold on, I think something's wrong with District 2. Yeah, he hasn't made a glonular okay. change. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and all of, any of those options, I, I think, is good to uh, equalize a little bit, and uh, I'll let Supervisor Simon. Um, I thought the change down to the dam road delineation there uh, was the, you know, was probably the best. So. Yeah. No, I liked it too. The dam road one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would concur. Not sure why it's saying those numbers are so far off. That was. Yeah. I think you, you got to give them back the red bud and uh, that split district. Yeah, I did. Oh. No, I don't think so. No, that's. Mm -hmm. I, miss, I, I must have accidentally picked up something somewhere else. Control Z. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let's back it up till those numbers bounce out to where they're supposed to be. Easiest way is okay. So let's go back to moving everything south of Dam Road into District One. And then, and then that put, reset this back to uh, where the boundary had been. So this is what we're still looking at on these. It, it, it undid that fix to District 4. Was that both for the Blue Lakes area and the Heights area? This was, oh, I, I forgot to undo the Heights. I, my apologies, sir. So let's see if we were going to take this back to So that leaves the um, Blue Lakes in District Three, and uh, makes the makes these just suggested changes over here between four and five, and that puts us under five percent. Supervisor, does that do you want anything further in this area? I think we're good. I think everybody said everything fine. you wanted in Kelsey, but it's hard for me to really see. Yeah, I, it's hard to tell. Yeah. yeah, the dark colors. Yeah. Um, I, unfortunately, I can't change the color scheme on yeah. these boundaries. The um, but just like it's the Riviera software the won't let me. It it's just assigns it's them randomly. Basically, you have all of Soda Bay, and I have the Heights. Okay. And then I get Blue Lakes back. 
you get blue legs back. Okay. Anything else the supervisors want to see, or is there a consensus that this, this map is the one we're going to open to public comment? Good, good. I'm good. Supervisor yeah, Zabat here. I, I, I'm, I'm good, and I, I want to hear what the public has to say. There's I'd only one it. other small area. <laughs> <laughs> it's just tiny, and I don't, if it's just this that little um, wedge. There's 40 people and 18 people. It's so close to Kelseyville Town, right there. Uh, yeah. This area here. Yeah, that little. It's just very strange because everybody that lives there goes, you know, is part of the Kelseyville community. So. Those, yeah, I think that would, that makes more sense, if that doesn't That's going to, that's going to move it up to, uh, I believe, Renfro and Merritt mm -hmm. is going to be yeah. where it's going to change that. Now, it does put District 4 a little bit over the 5%. Okay. I guess we could go back then. Any additional comments well, before I mean, we open unless it up? You, unless you want to go a little further, not towards like the highway, but like up on Scotts Valley Road, if that makes sense. That way you could accommodate for the 40 or whatever it is. How many people are actually up there? Yeah. I don't know if there's a big population up there. Yeah. Like three. So where are we talking about? Let's see. What is that um, kind of like that wave form line? Um, here, the here. creek uh, up above. I believe that's a jeep trail coming down off of the hill here, or coming out of this canyon, out of the White Rock Mountain. I mean, it's a jeep trail coming down this canyon. Gotcha. Yeah, there's not really that much to work with. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't see that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I tried. <laughs> I tried to save you on gas, EJ. <laughs> well, you have to go out there anyway because he has one side of the right. Right, 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 right. right. I'm, I'm out there. It just makes sense to keep the community together. Yeah. No, it does. I agree. Okay. I think. Uh, I think we're good. Yeah. I think we are at a consensus. And so. With that being said, I think we could open it up to the public. All right, is there anyone here that would like to speak? Diane? Actually, I just have a question. Is there a way to show the current boundaries versus the new proposed on the map there? Yes, right there. Where are they? In, in this, which area? The whole thing I think she's talking about. So, Mr. Chair, we do have one hand up in the Zoom room. Okay. Let's see. Oops. Sorry. Okay, one second. Uh, did you want to come up to the... Yes. Okay. Dirk Slowden, Mayor of Clear Lake. Uh, we uh, plot uh, the boundaries and we would prefer option three. If there is any way that you need to make adjustments to an orderly boundary, we wouldn't mind to have a third supervisor representing the city of Clear Lake. Thank you. I didn't realize that. So, option three would give three supervisors to the city of Clear Lake? I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know. Is that what you saying? Yeah. Well, 
have to look at that one. I just wanted to see. It's, it's still uh, just between districts one and two. Okay. It just moves the boundary from the creek to uh, 18th and then the city limits. Yeah, I think there is a hand up. Um, Mr. Balestros, you want to unmute and uh, go ahead and give the floor to you. Uh, good, uh, good evening, supervisors. It's a pleasure uh, and thank you for all your time and being here so late on such a long day. I just want to quickly uh, state my name is John Ballesteros. I'm a, a resident at 4595 Gaddy Lane. Uh, my husband, Brian Fisher, and I submitted a letter on behalf of a number of neighbors uh, in the area uh, advocating um, the, uh, exactly the, the inclusion of the neighborhood that Supervisor, Supervisor Pesca um, suggested being added to uh, District 5 um, to maintain the community of interest of, of uh, Kelseyville. Um, I think most of you have uh, seen the, the value in keeping that and acknowledge the, the need to keep that as a community of interest and we wholly support uh, the steps you've taken and uh, would like to uh, express our appreciation to uh, Super Supervisor Pesca for uh, advocating on this, on this behalf and your openness to uh, making those changes. So really appreciate the, that, that direction uh, that you're pursuing. Happy to answer any questions. Thanks. Thank so is this the map that we're looking at as the best option because it, the Gaddy Lane is still the divide here and not the creek? No, this one, the, the, oh. this, here's Gaddy, that was, this is the current district boundary, sorry. Oh, okay. I, there was a request <laughs> to see those earlier. It's, this line here is the new proposed gotcha. boundary. Then. Okay, yes, perfect. Okay. As, and here's Gaddy right here. Okay. I don't see any other hands up in the uh, Zoom room. Anyone else in the... Uh, well, actually, there is Betsy, Betsy Kahn. You can unmute. Thank you, uh, Chairman, and everybody here. I'm going to make two brief comments. I think you've done an incredible piece of work. Uh, I appreciate all the collaborative effort and the incredibly long day you've put in. And Lon Sharp is absolutely a rock star. Thank you. <laughs> Wow. Thank you, Betsy. Are there any other comments or concerns, or would anyone like to speak from the chambers? Okay. Hearing none, I guess we'll close the uh, we'll close the comment and. So we'll put this map out then for the public to comment on t till our next meeting. Is that how this is going to work? So what will happen next is we will, if we get consensus from the board uh, that option five as amended during this meeting is the option that is the um, preferred option, um, we will put it on the website. We will accept comments on it. Uh, we'll also use a surveyor to uh, actually uh, articulate the boundaries uh, and, pre and prepare a proposed amendment to the ordinance to approve it. Um, it will come back one more time. Additional comments can be made. Um, however, when it comes back the next time, it's going to be in writing um, and it's going to be brought as it. So that one is going to be a lot harder to make changes. So again, if there are changes that are contemplated, um, this meeting is the best place to do it. If we receive comments afterwards, um, we will uh, consider them. If they're substantial enough, we can bring them back to the board for another meeting to review them. Um, but ultimately, um, once we start uh, drafting the ordinance, it's going to be very hard to change. So we are really looking for kind of consensus today from the board members about which map you'd like us to finalize. Okay. I know I closed uh, public input, but I'll open it back up because I think there's a concern that... Uh, Thank you, yeah. Supervisor Yes, when uh, Mayor Sloten indicated that we like the option three part as it related to District 2 and District 1, 
we were assuming that you could apply that to District 5 for the rest of it, not an either order, but to just to, to adjust one and two and, you know, however Supervisor Pesco wants to, to do and, and turn it. Um, Scott, excuse me, and, and uh, you would like to do three, four, and five. That's that's fine, but two and one, our, our uh, preference would be to use option three for district one and district two, just to clarify that. I think. How much different is it? Yeah. What, yeah, what is the difference? I mean, because I was talking with Supervisor Sabatier on District 1 and District 2, and you know, we looked at the two options there to get the numbers correct, and you know, it seemed like the viable option was to go on the damn road, so. The difference that I see in the map that was just shown is uh, you, uh, District 1, would get the uh, Walmart uh, shopping center, and then um, the Cash Creek Apartments, and looks like some of those paper parcels in the uh, early numbered avenues is what I seem to have. The hospital, the hospital and the community college and all of that area as well. Gotcha, yeah. yeah. So, so the request is to use the boundary lines in the city of Clear Click as articulated in option three to apply that to option five ended in this meeting is that does the board want us to look at that that's what I'd like what mayor Sloten and I would like to look at yes uh, it seems like the numbers for between one and two are uh, much more balanced that way as well and 18th would take in the hospital uh, Canuck yes. Center and um, Woodland College as well as the the Walmart uh, area and and areas to the east in the avenues in fact, doing that, you get districts one and two now have the exact same population by yeah. making that change. Is it the board's pleasure to see that change? So uh, I'll say that I don't mind if that's the change that occurs. Um, I just think that going back to my original uh, statement that I made about District 3. I know that District 1 does have a large area all the way to the Napa line going down Butts Canyon Road um, and then coming all the way up here and also going all the way down um, what's that uh, the one that goes to the geysers can't think of it right now. Um, I, I just know that there's a lot of uh, traveling area in that area and so I don't know that it needs to be equal but at the same time I, I'm perfectly fine if that's the way it stays. Oh, I thought we had the consensus on the changes we made. Um, you know, we asked, you know, is everybody okay with the changes we made? So um, going back, let's take a look at it, I guess. But what does that change for what you were trying to do with Kelseyville and other places won't change anything? I don't think it changes anything. No, it doesn't change anything up there. Yeah. Okay. No, it, it doesn't change anything. The only thing it would change would be within uh, between District 1 and District 2 in the city of Clear Lake. And again, it's it's the board's pleasure. Both of them uh, meet the legal requirement, uh, but it's your pleasure which one you prefer. Let's take a look at it then. So this is uh, this is used. These are the numbers using 18th and the city limits as the boundary, and this is using um, Dam Road as the boundary. Where is the um, 100 unit apartment complex going to be? Right off of Dam Road, just north of it. Looks like that's all one census block with the apartment complex. I 
I don't have I don't have a preference either way. I'm not super rich about the egg go either direction. So yeah, um, I, I I've. Uh... I, I, I will say my, my preference is uh, the dam road, just because, again, in density of uh, area, I think it's easier for District 2 to cover uh, a larger number of folks in a smaller uh, region versus an equal amount of folks for uh, District 1 having such a large area. So uh, I will say that my preference is dam road. And that was my preference, too, when we had the consensus conversation. Any of the remaining board members have a preference? I'd have to leave it up to you. No. I'm not fine with what you have, and I'll continue with Blue Lakes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd be a problem. Yeah. If we well, they go to, yeah, they go, yeah, they're all associated with Upper Lake, so it makes sense. So I hear that the, um, the modification that was just proposed um, is uh, not the consensus of the board. So we would go back to the original option five with amendments that was presented prior to public comment. Is that correct? And it looks like that's what we're looking at. Yes. Okay. Is there a, re what's the reason that um, the city of Clear Lake wants to have the, the line there? The supervisor of the District 1, Moke, has been uh, starting to become really more involved with the City of Clay Lake over the last several months. And we like his input on all the projects that we have coming up. So uh, the two supervisors that are very involved in this, in this city is a good thing for the city. So would one of the options you wouldn't be in the city? It's not going to take everything out. You know, I do believe Supervisor um, 1 and 2 would both still have Clear Lake and would both therefore yeah. have a, a hand in terms of, of um, city projects. Uh, and just to kind of be clear about it, um, looking at wanting a specific supervisor over a district is not a grounds for modifying uh, a boundary. Um, wanting multiple representation is, um, is understandable. Um, and that can be considered loosely, but again, we want to make sure we keep the politics out and just really look at communities of interest and shared voices. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. Okay. Yeah, I want to make sure yeah, it's still open, so we'll just talk it through here. Yeah, yeah. do it now, because yeah. it would be easier to do it now. Yeah. Option three more evenly divides the number of representative the people that a representative has in each of those districts. It balances much more that way, but also that area, uh, 18th South, is a pretty homogenous area with the exception of you know, some, some uh, homes out to the east, but it has a block that is really, um, well, similar use. And I think it's, I like it, and I think the city likes option three or at least as it as it applies to one in districts one and two, irregardless of who's sitting in your seats uh, now or in the future, it's it's the it's a homogeneous district. It's cleaner in our opinion, and it balances the population in each of the districts the best. That's uh, that's the other other reason that certainly that I have. I think it's it too. I appreciate the conversation, but I like the damn road option. I, you know, when we talk about delineating, I, I think that's a good one. And still, the conversation about, uh, well, we don't talk about representation, but still part of that, still have the slice of clearly. Supervisor Sabatier? I'm good with the uh, as is. And, and I know that uh, there was talk about. Um, Representation, and I understand that that's not meant to be, but that that um, there's always invitations that's possible uh, for supervisors to work together, even if it's outside of their uh, specific jurisdictions. And so, I think that that's always a possibility as well. Okay. Are there any?
there any other comments? All right, so I think we're uh, at the consensus of uh, the <coughs> dam road and everything else that we've worked on. Yeah, all right. we're the changers, yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> So uh, we'll close public comment. I think where will we where will we go from here? Close public hearing, um, and I thank you for doing so. Um, again, this matter, the, the recommendation, the option three, which I saw Lon just save, um, we will prepare that as the proposed map for the final um, implementation that will take place uh, November thirtieth at nine a.m. in a special meeting. Uh, we'll prepare it um, and have it ready for your uh, review and approval at that time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate again. I appreciate all the hard work of the board members, um, and whoever said uh, Lon is a rock star was under uh, <laughs> valuing him. Um, and as is Matthew, um, it was. It's been an absolute pleasure to work with with both of them, and and you have real stars on your on your staff. Yes. Thank you very much for your hard work. This is Matthew, and I, I just have to say what a privilege it's been to work with both Margaret. And Carolyn Walker of Prentice Long. Uh, they've been incredible partners and collaborators. All right. With that, it uh, looks like we'll go ahead and adjourn. Yes. yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for coming. Have a good evening. Drive safe.